So we're now in another example, which is example EX23, which again is in my Java 8 folder in my Live Lessons GitHub repository. And this particular example is going to illustrate a very important point. And I, I talk about this a lot in my, my lectures, that you should try to minimize calls to join you because calling join causes things to block and therefore degrade performance. So we're gonna have sort of two tests here, one of which is going to call block and thus degrade performance, and it'll call it many times, versus only making one call to join. And we'll see that that helps the code run substantially faster. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna do here. It's kind of a really interesting and fun test. So we're gonna have ourselves an atomic integer, which is going to generate a new value each time it's called, and we're gonna start it at the value 10. And then we're going to have a supplier field called M supplier. And what this does is it increments the counter, sleeps for one second, and then it returns the incremented value. And you'll see that the sleep is significant for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Then down here, we're gonna have another function called action, which takes a parameter and it's of type integer, and it will return an odd number. If it was past an odd number, it'll return that odd number. And if it's not an odd number, it'll return null. <laughs> and you'll be, you're probably like, why would you do that? And I'll show you later if we do that to filter things out in a clever way. So if we mod the value by two and the result is one, it was an odd number. Otherwise, it's an even number. So we return the number if it's odd and we return null if it's not odd. Okay, so now let's go take a look at the main entry point into the program. We start out by creating a list of suppliers. So we have a list of these things that will increment an atomic counter and sleep for one second. And then we're gonna run two different programs and we're gonna time the running of these two different programs. We're gonna run the test many joins method, which as the name implies is going to call join many times. And we're gonna call another method called test one join, which as the name implies, we'll call join one time. And I think uh, you can probably appreciate the fact that calling join uh, one time will run faster than calling join many times. So let's go take a look first at test many joins. So what test many joins does is it takes that suppliers list and it turns it into a stream of suppliers. And then for each of these suppliers, we're going to run the supplier asynchronously using the completable future supply async method passed as a method reference to the map intermediate operation. And of course that will start the computations running in the background and it'll give us back a stream of completable futures to integers. For this particular example, for the test many joins, we're then gonna do something you should never do in production code. We're going to go ahead and call the then apply method on the future that comes back. So each of these things is gonna come back as a future. We're gonna call apply and we're gonna call the join method, which will block until that asynchronous computation is done. And we know from what the computations do, if we take a look at what they're doing up here, what M supplier is doing, we can see that they're sleeping for one second. So this particular implementation, if we have six of these darn things, that's gonna sleep for six seconds while each of these finishes synchronously. So big problem, right? Um, and then when we're done, we go ahead and we're gonna end up now with a stream of completable futures. Notice that <laughs> we're just joining here to use the filter operation. And these things will be done at this point, but we're gonna use the list of futures collector to turn this into a single completable future to a list of results that will be the, the results that we get back. And then what we're gonna do, just, just for the kick, just for the kick of it, the heck of it, we're gonna go ahead and asynchronously display the results using this display primes method. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and check to see if the numbers are prime or not. And if they're non-prime, it filters them out and gets rid of them. And then it is going to create a single string of the primes all, all uh, joined together. So that's what we're going to do at the end. And notice that this 
then accept async returns a completable future. So we're going to have to join on that one too. So there's lots of joins going on in this particular piece of code, which surprise, surprise is not going to work very fast. Let's take a look at a better way to do this. This uses a different approach, a better approach, a much more scalable approach where we only have one completable future and one, or sorry, one join call on one completable future. So here's how this works. It starts out much the same. We start out with a stream of suppliers to integers. We cause all those suppliers to run in the background threads in the common fork join pool. And then instead of using filter, which required us to join, we're going to use map. So what we're saying here is when this completable future finishes, then apply the action. And so after we've gotten that value here, these things are all going to be able to run in parallel. So it's not going to block the way the other one did. So this is going to apply the action. And now we end up with a stream of most likely uncompleted completable futures. They haven't completed yet. And just for kicks, we're going to use the stream of futures collector, which is a slight variant of the one we looked at before, which was the list of futures collector. And we're going to end up with a stream of these things. So you can see here, we end up with a completable future to a stream of, of integers. And let's make this a var just to make it a little bit more concise. So then what we're going to do is actually pretty cool. We're going to use that completable future, which will only trigger when everything is done. We're going to call then accept async. And what that does is it takes the stream, not the list. Last time we ended up with a list, but this time we have a stream. And what we do is we are going to filter out all the null results. And remember, null results occurred if we ended up with uh, even numbers. So if we had even numbers, then those are all going to get filtered out. And so we're going to end up with a stream of odd numbers. And then we're going to use the to list method to create a list of those things. And then we're going to go ahead and display the primes out of that. And we only have a single call to join here. So let's go ahead and run the program. And you see it starts up and it'll crank away for a little bit doing all those computations in the background. And you'll also see it as it runs that the one that does test many joins, you can see it's it's basically waiting a second between each of those computations because there was a, a sleep for one second. So you can see that the timestamp here is basically sleeping. And so these things are running synchronously and they're blocking essentially. And we get back sensible results. 11 and 13 are indeed prime numbers. In contrast, you can see here that the test one join method has all of these things run in parallel. So they're all running in the background. You can see if you look at the timestamps, they're all very, very close to each other. They're not taking a long time to run. And so things are finishing whenever they finish, but they're not running in this kind of lockstep, two-way request response style blocking approach. They're just running asynchronously and they're finishing. And we get correct results again. This time we find that we have 17 and 19 being prime numbers out of that list of values. And that indicates that this approach is running in a way that doesn't block. And if you look at the results, you can see what happens. The first approach, the test many joins approach, each of those calls to join had to sleep for a second. So it took over six seconds to run. In contrast, test one join ran all of those calls in parallel. And since I have a nice 10 core MacBook Pro here, they all ran basically within a second. And then there was just a little bit of time left over at the end to compose the results and find what numbers were prime and not. So hopefully this will illustrate vividly the difference between using join calls excessively, which you don't want to do, versus having only one join call, which you do want to do. And then it also has these performance results that demonstrate the win in terms of runtime performance. This particular test is a little bit contrived because we're sleeping, but the point would generalize if you had computations that took a while to run.